Hi, Sheena Douglas here with the landscape set of aqua tints. And um, as you can see here, what I've done is I've made myself a little colour chart. And you can see the colours of landscape because I thought I chose them really to suggest um, you know colours that you would find in the landscape. The clues are there. But I'm thinking of a British landscape here. If you are from sunnier climes, you may have a totally different palette. So the landscape and name only. You, of course, you can do all the other techniques. You can do with all the other sets. You can use them for stamping. You can use them for your salt backgrounds. Anything you want. It's just this is more of a natural looking muted palette. And what I've done is I have decanted my colours into my uh, palette, a spare palette, simple, simply by popping my pets in, giving them a squeeze, then holding some of the colour and then pressing and then they go back into the little jars for later and then this is what we're going to play with. So what I'd like to do is um, keep them in the same order in the palette as they are in the um, in the stand, if that makes sense. So I know that the dark blue is here. I know that the grey is here. Because sometimes you can see on the on the bottles um, the colour easier than you can when they're in the palette is, is like this. So that you've got something to refer to. So what I thought we'd do, as it's called landscape, is to show you how to create a wash with the colours. Um, as if you were going to create a background for some landscape stamping, for example. And so what, you, what I think works best is, um, if you're using a large piece of card, as the largest flat brush you can, um, and you're going to get a, a nicer um, coverage and less kind of um, random factors. Random factors are good though as well because they add some interest. So, wet your brush, give it a bit of a dry, and then just decide to start painting colours. Now, I'm going to start with this kind of warmer, kind of um, honey kind of colour here, and I'm just going to go across. Plenty of colour. I would say just, I'm going to put them all, I'm going to use all colours um, on this to start with. Just so that you can see what they are. Even if you put all of them on one piece of card, it still works. So we've got that nice kind of like, could be kind of a cornfieldy kind of thing up there. If I wet it, see how it's blending out more now? So it's less of a hard line. And then I might want to pop some of the green at the bottom. But what I did was, because this is quite a strong green, I quite like it on top of the brown because it makes it a lot more um, kind of muted. More of a, um, a woody kind of, you know, green rather than strong. But that's great, can you see? You want a little bit more brown on? Go ahead and pop it on there. It's all your call. Could be any time of the year. Quite autumnal so far, I think. Hmm. Okay. Make little hills if you want. Just have fun. And you find that they go on so well that you really you don't have to worry like you do with some colours, where you think, oh no, they're running away from me and I've lost it and I can't get it back. So can you see how now I'm just popping a little bit of that blue up to that little kind of cornfieldy look there we have and if you want to wet it out just pop some water and you'll see it'll wick towards the top of the page and then I might want to use the dark blue I think that's the dark blue yeah at the top give it a bit more drama in the sky just go across like this now that's all pretty even and I've got a nice kind of you know even washes going on there which is fab but I might want to add a little bit more interest and a little bit something going on in there um, I love here can you see here what's happening because the green um, was put down there and then this was really wet the next layer this is wicking and to me that's looking like foliage I've done nothing so if you want to wick a colour from one colour into the next wet the cord above that colour and it'll draw the colour up just caught that and you can see it looks like kind of grasses or something like a little grassy mound love that fab that would make great background for your stamps so but what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and wet the sky a little bit more I may dark excuse me hiccups there may darken the sky just a touch more there for a bit more drama if you think it's looking a bit not balanced you've got too much dark blue there and it's looking too light at the top you know what just add a bit dark blue at the bottom as well then you've got another layer if you kind of start off, I like to start off e really simple, stronger colour at the bottom, fade into virtually nothing in the middle, then stronger again, fade into virtually nothing in the middle. Now, the next thing, I'm going to drop some water in places, like this, like that. You can see it's already wicking and pushing colour out. Then I'm going to take a 
piece of kitchen paper, scrunch it up and then just blot. And you've got the easiest clouds ever. Because the thing is, as you can, um, we can actually full bleach them out later as well, even if you want them lighter. But you know the way clouds aren't just one one shade, although they've got you know, kind of part of it's transparent, part of it's really light. Um, you've got a really nice star for an interesting sky here. Much more interesting than just that expanse of blue. And there you've got a really, really simple start of a landscape. Now if you wanted to bleach that out, I'm going to go ahead and dry that. And then we can just have a bit of play and I'll show you some of the little bits. So there we are, we've come, I've dried this and what we can do is um, we can, if your clouds aren't white enough or they're not fluffy enough, you can always full bleach a little bit more out by just adding some water and then just going across. Now what I think will be really nice is if there's still part of it that's still lighter than the full bleach part because you blotted it out to start with. See, so you've still got some, some interest there, it's not just a one flat colour. So, big splodge of water with one of your um, brushes that came in your kit. Really good for holding a lot of water, these ones. Great cloud brushes. And then just tap it and then just blot it. And there you've got some more clouds, a bit more interest going on there. Now, I did mention that we'd use every colour, but we'd missed one and that was the warm grey. Now, if you want to add a bit more stormy look into your sky, you can always just put that in retrospectively if you want to just... Some little streaks going through there. And what that will do is it will just take away some of the the um the the kind of the pure colour, the, the lighter. This is a great one for put mixing with any of your sets actually. If you want to take away what they call the chroma, then um, dull it down so that the colour looks more grunge and less vibrant. much more like my um this kind of sky and landscape I'm used to yeah now I'm home a little bit stormier so don't be scared have a place only a piece of card even if you if you learn something you go oh well that didn't work in order to do that the next time but I think that looks really that looks much more interesting now see that little bit of grey in there grey cloud and um, in fact I'll turn it around so hopefully you can see um, and what you might want to do is use a little bit of that grey even in the foreground just to tone it down a little bit as well just to mute the colours but there's a um, little quick landscape clouds easy peasy ready for your stamps if you're a stamper stenciling painting whatever you want to do um, more inspiration online, crafterscompanion.co.uk or sheena.tv for um, a gallery using the aquatints. Um, and we'll see you for more technique videos. Fantastic, thanks. Bye.